All right. Hi, everybody. Good morning. My name is Andrea Kurana, and we are here with James Bennett, Isha, and Jagdish, who are from Plush Puppy. And we're really excited to have you here, James. Uh, thank you for taking the time out and, uh, you know, helping us Indian groomers and uh, breeders. There are a lot of breeders on here as well who are very excited yeah. about Plush Puppy. So I'm going to, uh, you know, go over to you now and hand it over. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Tell us all about Splash Puppy and everything we need to know about you. Hi, perfect. Hi, everybody. Hope everybody's well. Um, <clears throat> obviously, I'm James. Uh, they they def I know Andrea and Isha and Jagdi can't say ja Jagdish. Jagdi yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, did a little, obviously, a little introduction to me on the with a, a advertising, but I am a third generation poodle person and dog groomer. So my mum did it, my grandmother also showed poodles and showed dogs and was a dog groomer at themselves as well. So I'm um, very, I guess, um, in the bones. So that the whole family are all groomers within reason. So um, today we'll talk about Plush Puppy. I've been with Plush Puppy now probably nearly four or five years myself, but have been using the product for the last 10 years. One of my favorites. I've used many different ones leading in and Plush Puppy was the only, only one I ever liked. It always gave me the results I needed. So obviously now owning my own grooming salon and school, that's all I use in my salon and my school. Hi, but James. Not... Good morning. Good morning. So um, it's a, I'm very passionate about the product. So I'm excited to explain it all to you and how I would use it in my own salon as well. Because I find the results I use on my show, how you get it on my show dogs. I find using it in the salon, my clients all really love it. And as well as a lot of groomers don't know a lot about the product and how to use it in a salon sense, but to use it in the salon, it's the best in my, in my honest opinion. So I can, um, I said to everybody before that I would then show everybody and let you walk through my salon quickly before we got into it all. So I'll turn my camera around and go for a bit of a walk around my salon. I can't figure out how to turn it, so I'll just walk you around. So on. So I've only owned a grooming salon for two years now, so just gone two years. So this is my salon area as you walk in the reception. Ooh, fancy. At the moment, we just only stock plush puppy, but we also do stock dog food, and leaves and collars. So my salon reception area is not giant, not very big. I use it as, as well as we can. So I have in my salon three groomers, but I have three other bathers. So I have about six girls at the moment and a receptionist. So it's as big as my salon gets. My bathing area, sorry. Not a big room at all. And then we have built-ins in my salon. I promote, I, I am very cage free. They just have built-in bays and obviously these are two of our own dogs here. And then my school area. This is just a closed off room from when I do private lessons and I'm doing teaching. And that's it. So that's my school area as well. It's another big salon, but obviously it's all the plush puppy range that we'll speak about today. And this is everything I use in my own salon. So, when I'm, so the late Plush Puppy started was from John and his late wife, uh, Cheryl, in Australia. So Plush Puppy is obviously a, is Australian made, and it's what, one of the biggest products in our country, along with other, some other brands, but Australia, Plush Puppy is one of the biggest worldwide as well. It's, it's been a lot of countries worldwide, especially now in India again. Plush Puppy has been around for well over nearly 20 years now. And, and just growing more and more popular every year amongst groomers and dog show uh, groomers as well. So when I'm using, when I'm explaining Plush Puppy in my own salons or clients and my staff and groomers, everybody's obviously wanting the perfect results with Plush Puppy. So I, Plush Puppy has a very vast range in the salon. So I, I'll use some examples of some reads of what I, we have in the salon, obviously the same as you use than how I would obviously use those products. I'll introduce the range first. Sorry. I'll 
So we have salon formula shampoo, salon formula conditioner, we have bodybuilding shampoo, natural conditioning shampoo, all purpose, a texture shampoo, herbal whitening, deep cleansing, uh, sensitive skin. Then we've got sea breeze oil, coat rescue, OMG, TLC, volumizing spray, fast blow dry spray, wonder wash, odor muncher, reviver coat, and any static spray. I also have some of the plush puppy ready to use bottles as well. So this is the whole range that I use in my own salon. And I also sell in my salon for clients as well. Plus we do have a, a lot more of a range, a lot bigger range as well with the show grooming products. So a lot of your chalks and creams and your powders. In the salon, I don't use them. They're not, they're not needed for what we're in the salon as much. So honestly, I only use them on my show dogs. So when we're talking about products in the salon, so you get your salon formula, conditioner and shampoo. In the salon, this is a perfect shampoo for any breed of dog. I bath dogs twice, sometimes three times, depending on the breed. Generally, I will always use salon formula as one of my first baths, first washes, just to get all the dirt out of the coat. It's an easy shampoo to use. I also use it on a lot of, I do cheap baths on a weekend, so very like a bath and towel dry on my weekends. I use it on all of those as well. It's a very easy shampoo to use, very not a cost effective. A little bit cheaper than some of the other range, but to stock it in the salon, cost effective wise and price wise, it's a, it's a good shampoo to use across the board. Same with your salon formula conditioner. It's the same, it's the exact same. It's very similar to the silk protein conditioner that Plush Puppy do use and sell, but just a slightly cheaper version for a salon, but it's all designed for salon dogs. If I'm bathing and you shit through in my salon, it's just a normal cream and black shih tzu or majority, majority white and cream in there. Depending what I'm doing, obviously on the dog, Plush Puppy, yeah. my, my main first one I would use is the natural conditioning shampoo. I use it the exact same as one of my first baths, whether it's salon formula or the natural conditioning. Natural conditioning shampoo I find is the best one to get a lot of dirt and grime out of a coat. So first, whether it's a Shih Tzu, a Pomeranian, Bulldog, Dalmatian, doesn't matter, Poodle, does not matter, Husky. It's my first one I always like to use. I find, obviously, India you also have a lot, of, a lot of dogs get quite dirty in India as well. Same as in Brisbane and Australia, where I live. Um, my dogs and all my salon dogs, obviously, they're pets first, they roll around in dirt, mud, everything. They always get stuff stuck in their hair from the dirt and the grass. I find this is the best one to get all the all the dirt, all the all the material out of their coat. So then at least I can start with a fresh, clean dog straight away. So if I was to bath the Shih Tzu, bath, or any most, to be brutally honest, nearly every dog I groom and bath in the salon first, I first bath them in this, the salon formula. I just like to start to, to make sure they're clean from the get-go. Then I would, depending on what I'm doing to the dog, obviously if they have white, I'm going to bath them in the herbal whitening shampoo. In my set and in my salon, obviously in Plush Puppy as well, it says in all the bottles you can dilute it down one part shampoo to 10 parts water. So when you're diluting it down, it depends how you like to use it. A lot of groomers, we do use the mixer bottles in the Plush Puppy, or I also use just a uh, I think a loofah, do you know what a, like a sponge yeah, loofah? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. I use that as well. So there's some of my girls. So you can put a couple of squirts of the, the shampoo in a little small jar, a jug with a loofah and really make sure we're scrubbing that dog, whether we use a loofah or by hand with the mixer bottle. Mm -hmm. So I find that herbal whitening makes all the dogs, obviously it's designed to keep them extremely white. A lot of groomers I do find, even with the plush puppy one, is very lucky. If you use it straight and neat, I find it doesn't stain. I, I have, I don't, I very rarely don't stain them. Sometimes you can stain them blue or purple, depending on the whitening. I, do, I find that plush puppy don't stain them at all. And I do put it on straight on a lot of dogs and I touch wood, never have had an issue with it before coming through the coat, especially on our own dogs. So if I'm bathing 
So far, it's natural conditioning shampoo. Then they have a whitening shampoo. Then obviously, I will rinse them out. That would and be on the, sorry, James, that would be on the white parts of the dog, is it? Or everywhere? I can use it on the whole dog. I use it on okay. the whole dog. But the dog's black, brown, red, gray, it doesn't matter. Obviously, I'm, it makes whites whites. Right. But I find on a lot of the, all the other colors of the dog, I find it brings out the natural color in the dog and makes it glossier. Okay. So I use it on my own black standard poodle as well. Okay. I, you, you would think you would only use black shampoo on a black dog. I, use, I like to use whitening because I find it highlights the coat and makes it a lot glossier and shinier okay. on a white dog. So I won't just use white on whitening. I, I will still use this all over on the dog. doesn't matter where. And if I'm... Obviously, scissoring a dog, my main, the only one I will use to scissor a dog, there's two I will use. Depends what the result I'm after is. Plus, probably have natural body, oh, sorry, natural bodybuilding shampoo. As it says, it's bodybuilding shampoo. Body, it, putting it in the coat all over, it lifts the coat and gives it a lot more volume and density. So it's perfect for Pomeranians, Poodles, anything, any breed like that. Obviously, it doesn't matter. We do a lot of scissoring in my salon, a lot of scissored legs all over, and the scissored bodies all over, so a lot of long teddy bear haircuts. So majority of our dogs are getting a bodybuilding shampoo, even if it's only in the face, if we're doing a short body haircut mm -hmm. and a scissored face, I still put bodybuilding shampoo because I find it gives me a lot more body and texture for a soft drop coat. So it doesn't matter if it's a Maltese, Maltese cross, it does not matter. Or I'm sure you have Labradoodles and Cavoodles. Not too many. We have too many doodles yet. <laughs> we have a lot in Australia. I have a lot in my salon. So we, I use this on every dog as well. A lot of dogs, especially when I'm scissoring, I find it's the best. They get that hair follicle and make it really dense. So it makes it easier to scissor. Plus, we do have a new one out that you can, is designed for harsh hair coats, which is a texture shampoo, which is very similar to your bodybuilding, but it brings, it's for coarser coats and a lot more, it brings out a lot more coarse coarseness and texture through the shampoo. I still use this on poodles and a lot of scissor breeds. So I find, the, I find the result it gives me. I get a lot more texture, a lot more on the coat. You can feel the texture and the coarseness and it makes it a lot harder, like harsher, so a lot easier to scissor and put a beautiful finish on. So I would use either eyes on a lot of breeds. It depends what I'm using. But as I said, if I'm marking a shit or anything like that, I'm gonna mark it in green first, natural conditioning. Then rinse them off, bath them in over whitening, rinse them off, and then bath them in bodybuilding, and then rinse them off. If I'm scissoring something in the salon, I will not, I will not condition them. I'll use OMG at the end of it, but I won't condition them only on the ears and the tail. If I'm needing to, um, to obviously scissor them, I don't want to soften that hair follicle too much. Okay. Let's grab a lot of the products down and go to. So you have the all purpose shampoo plus puppy. So it's an, with, with henna, it's designed to bring out the natural colors in a dog. So on a lot of, I will use this on a lot of red dogs, red, browns, and it brings out the natural colors in the coat. Same on the huskies. So we, we have a lot of ourselves, we have gray huskies and we have our black, we also have our black huskies. We use this in the bath as well. It brings out the natural colors of their coat. So it's a really good shampoo to use on bulldogs, uh, bull masters, all those red Rhodesian Ridgebacks, those type of breeds. Mm -hmm. It just brings out the natural colors in the coat. Obviously you can enhance the colors a lot more and make them a lot glossier and shinier using the whitening shampoo. So I find Plush Puppy, Plush Puppy, in, in a, especially in a grooming salon, a lot of groomers obviously wanting the results but not sure, exactly sure what to use. There's obviously a multitude of shampoos I will use in my salon to get the desired result that I'm after. Because a lot of groomers, we like to do it quick paced as well. So we're obviously trying to understand how to use the product properly. But if I have some dogs in the salon, I find that their coat needs a bit more nourishment or it's a bit sensitive. I'll either use the sensitive skin shampoo. Same thing for any, it's, it's one part shampoo to 10 parts water in a mixed bottle. And I, with the sensitive skin shampoo, I will put it on their body coat and let them sit there for a couple minutes just to kind of really settle into the coat. I just find that's the best way to let the coat settle and the skin for the dogs because they do have a really dry, sensitive skin. So a lot of our Malamutes and the breeds like that or Shih Tzus that have really dry and sensitive skin, I will use this. Instead, 
but probably the main one I would use for a dog with quite dry or sensitive skin is deep cleansing shampoo. I find it really gets to the skin and nourishes the coat and just so and soothes their skin and coat down in between grooms. So if I'm just doing a bath and blow dry and a lot of reeds, this is the one I will always use in my salon. It's, it's one of my favorites for that. And I find it's just designed for dogs with skin issues or skin allergies and problems. So you have your two that you can use. So you have your sensitive skin or your deep cleansing. I, I My favorite to use in the salon personally is the deep cleansing shampoo. I just like the result it gives me and the nourishment. It puts a lot of condition back in the coat as well. I will use that with the salon formula conditioner just to make sure I really look after that coat and, the, and try and help resolve their skin issues. But generally I would use this on a lot of breeds that we do in the salon that do have skin issues. They come in weekly and I will bath them in this, bath and blow dry them in this. If I'm talking about in the salon when I'm bathing a husky and my double coat breeds, do you have many double coats in India? Uh, in the we have we have a fair share. We do get a lot of huskies, yeah. and uh, we have uh, we have German shepherds. Uh, we have uh, golden retrievers. Uh, we do get forms as well, yeah. spits. Yeah. So we have we have a few uh, you know, thickish and double coated breeds. So. So plush, <clears throat> if anybody ever looks, I'm sure they do on the Plush Puppy India website, YouTube obviously as well, but I know Plush Puppy Australia always do have it and it's there available. They have grooming articles for how you do each breed, obviously purebred dogs. There, and they have a great depth of knowledge of how to bath every single dog and how to prepare them for a maintenance groom or for a dog show. So Plush Puppy was always designed for show dogs and now is transitioning into the pet industry. I found a lot of the ways how I would bath any normal breed or purebred dog is exactly how I would bath them, any crossbred or any salon dog in this, in, in my salon. It's the same way I would bath a husky for a dog show is exactly the same way as I would bath a salon dog. Because I like the, the results it gives me for a show dog to the salon dog. I, it gives me the exact same results that I'm after. So if I'm getting a, I do a lot of dogs six to eight weekly in my salon, if not four weeks. So if I have a husky coming in every six weeks in my salon, when they come through, again, I will obviously bath them in either the herbal white, I'll bath them sorry, first, and then natural conditioning shampoo, then rinse them out. And I will bath them then in the all purpose with the whitening all over them. So I have a question, James. Do you mix both the shampoos together or would you like, you know, uh, bath and wash and then bath and wash? You can bath and Is wash. Okay I, do, I, do mix, mix? I do mix some together Okay. To cut down my time frames. But I always have all my bottles pre-prepared before I go straight through so I can do it quite quick. So it obviously doesn't take as long because us as groomers, we are in a rush. Right. So we're always trying, trying to find ways to make it quicker. Yep. As long as I'm pre-prepared, I do it straight away. It doesn't take me any longer if I use one or two shampoos or I use five. I can do it just as quick compared to doing two shampoos. Okay. So if I'm bathing a husky in the salon, obviously, again, first every breed, I also always bath them in natural conditioning shampoo first, then rinse them out, then bath them all over in the all-purpose, natural all-purpose and the whitening all over as well, and rinse them out. A lot of groomers condition double coats as well. I'm sure you all condition a double coat in the salon. Yep. I used to do this until I realized, obviously, how to groom a dog properly, especially at Arctic breed, like a Husky or Malamute, and how Plush Puppy has it. Plush Puppy has a product called Series Oil. Obviously, oil meaning you can see it in the bottle is quite an oily product. It's a very strong product. So in the bottle, it explains to you how to use it. So you can either use one teaspoon of this to a liter of water. It depends. I use in my salon, I have a hydro bath. So generally, when I do you use, use hydro baths in India as much, or you just mainly uh, use no, no, we don't. Tubs? No, so if don't. I'm if I'm to use this in the salon and just a normal bathtub without a hydro bath, I would make it up in a warm bucket. So I would use for a husky, I would use sea breeze oil, <clears throat> salon formula, and coat rescue. So I'll explain them all first. So you see breeze oil. Is, is designed to help repair coat, look after skin and stop breakage. I find it on a double coat in the salon when using the sea breeze oil in the salon, the same way I would use it on a show dog. I find my double coats don't blow as much dead hair. 
and I can keep them in better condition between grooming appointments, whether it's four weeks to eight weeks. Mm -hmm. And I find them when I'm, they're coming back in, if they're having skin issues or skin irritations or coat breakage, the, the constant bathing them in a routine of sea breeze oil is keeping their coat in condition and also repairing any skin issues because that's what the sea breeze oil is designed to do. It's designed to look after the skin and the hair. So obviously you can, if you're feeding your dogs good product, or like good food, it obviously helps them from the inside out. But Plush Puppy is designed to fix everything, or not fix, but obviously nourish the coat from the outside. And that's what you want to do with them. So if I'm bathing them in the salon, I'll get a warm bucket and put a cap of oil. Let's see, because how I use it is just a cap. I always buy the biggest bottle. I fill up a cap in a warm bucket and I put some conditioner in the bucket. And then how much coat. conditioner would you use? Like, what would the proportion be? So if I was to do it, I'd put with the pump bottle in there. I'd put about three or four squirts of the pump bottle in. Okay. Uh, and, just, and obviously then three or four squirts of the coat rescue in the bucket, mix it up, fill it all the way up, and I would pour it all over the dog. And this is something you don't rinse off. Oh, you, okay. don't, you do not have to rinse sea breeze oil off at all. Oh. And, I, and I find I pop them away in a, in a crate for about five minutes with maybe a fan on them or a dryer just to let it soak into their skin and their body coat and a husky and a malamute or any double coat with a really thick coat. Like a, I think other breeds you might have. Japanese fits definitely. Yeah. You can use them some Pomeranians, but I, I don't because obviously I want to scissor them. But I find I leave them in there for about five minutes and then I dry them and they dry a lot quicker. And I find you can feel the oil residue slightly through the coat, but it leaves a really nice glossy and a nice conditioned feel through the coat. And once they're coming back in every six weeks, they're not as much work in between. So I'm finding they're not blowing as much coat, especially if I'm having skin irritations. Like in a lot of malamutes we have in Australia, they get hot spots. We, right. we, do. we do get hot yeah. spots as well. I have a malamute that I've been doing for five years now that I use the sea breeze oil on. And obviously, depending on the breed, she's a bit bigger, so I'll use two caps. Mm -hmm. uh, I bath her in that and I find her coat's in a lot better condition and I get rid of all the skin irritations, the dry, itchy skin, the flakiness, all the dead skin, and her hot spots are gone. She used to have a lot of uh, ball patches all over her body. And right. I found the sea breeze oil repaired the hair follicle. The sea breeze oil, when you're using, when you're trying to use a product like sea breeze oil and coat rescue and the conditioner, the hair follicle has three layers. So first up with the coat rescue, it's designed to repair the hair shaft from the inside out. So I've, it always repairs that first shaft of the hair follicle. Mm -hmm. so what it's designed to, it's designed to repair any breakage or any dry and damaged skin and coat from the inside out. Then uh, the conditioner is your second hair follicle. It protects that hair, second hair follicle. And then for a double coat and breeds like that, is sea breeze oil is your outer layer. So it protects that from the dry elements, from drying out and all that air and dirt, trying to break it off and damage it. So in, in the salon, obviously that's if I'm bathing a double coat, that's how I would use it. So with the sea breeze oil, as I said, you don't need to rinse it out. It's a leave-in product. So would you use sea breeze for any breed or would it be specific only to, uh, you know, your huskies and Arctic breeds? Uh, for definitely Arctic breeds. It depends in the salon use. I wouldn't use it in all breeds, no. So I'm only using it on my huskies, my Malamutes, my Jap Smiths, depending maybe a Golden or an Australian Shepherd or a Border Collie with a very thick coat. Uh -huh. But obviously, as it says, sea breeze oil is quite oily. So if you put it in a dog with a very fine coat, like a golden retriever with a very fine coat, mm -hmm. and you use too much, you're going to leave too much oil residue in their coat. So obviously that's not the desired look you want. You don't want them going home looking like you poured a bottle of oil all over them. That's not the result you're after. And obviously that's not what the client's paying for. You can use sea breeze oil on those dogs, and I do use them in some for a dog show. If I was to groom a show dog, it did, I probably do have that formula in there. But a lot, of, a lot of salon dogs, I will just use like a border collie with a fine coat. I will just use salon formula conditioner. But so I you won't. could leave that on as well, right? The salon. I leave, I leave it in and I, I semi rinse it out. Okay. So I don't, I don't fully rinse it out. I semi rinse it out because I like to, I like it to stay in the hair. And I found by only semi rinsing it out, not completely rinsing it out, my border collies and all those finer breeds of the double coats, I find the hair is not as dry in between grooms. So in a salon, I said, bathing those type of breeds, 
again, I'm using a product that's going to condition the hair follicle and really look after it, and I'm not completely rinsing it out. So for my Arctic Breeze, as I said, I will use the Sea Breeze Oil, the Coat Rescue, and the Salon Formula Conditioner together, and you do not rinse them out at all. You do not leave them in, and then you can bath and blow, and you blow dry them like normal. So once I'm, again, now if we would talk about, I'm trying to think of some other breeze you have, like Yorkies as well with a really fine coat. So we do, I do a fair few Yorkies in my salon as well. So first up with the Yorkie, again, I'm going to bath them in as for a first wash. I generally bath them in natural conditioning shampoo. This is obviously designed to also soften the hair down a bit so it lays there because it, it has conditioner in it and it conditions the coat. Mm -hmm. But then I would rinse it out. So bath them in this first and rinse it out. Then I would bath them at all purpose because I want to bring out the natural colours in their coat. And I find it on the black on the black through the Yorkie as well. It just it puts a really nice gloss and shine to their coat. And then if it's just a haircut in the salon, obviously I don't condition the full body. I'm still needing to give it a haircut, so I don't want to uh, soften that hair follicle too much. But if it's got a lot longer coat and I'm doing a tidy on a, a dog in full coat, like a Yorkie or a Maltese, that's when I would use the conditioner again, and then blow dry them through. Okay, we have a few questions, James. If uh, you know you'd like, yeah, to... definitely, no, yeah. definitely, yeah. All right, okay, so we have one from Giri Jesh, which he's asking, uh, what would be the procedure to show groom a husky and what products would you use? I think Giri Jesh, he's pretty much answered that one, right, James, because you were talking about yeah. huskies right now. Yeah, we, my partner, plus probably, <clears throat> plus probably Australia, the owner, John McCall, he he owns huskies, him and his like wife, Shell, they breed and own huskies under the prefix Southern Lights. My partner, Kiri, also breeds and shows the huskies with John. So I have one here that I obviously saw at the very beginning. Um, so with doing, as I said before, doing a husky is the same way as what I, a show dog. I would prepare them very similar, minus a couple of products that aren't, warrant, that aren't needed for the salon use, like blow dry cream or um, sweet, oh, no, so blow dry cream or volumizing cream. Uh, those are the only two products for a show dog that I would use that I wouldn't use in my salon. But anything show related like that or dog, dog related for, for purebred dogs is on the Flush Puppy Australia website and they read articles. They have every dog on there. So you can go through it. It's very in depth and explain some maintenance, show grooms, and how to look after the coat and what products to use. Because Flush Puppy has a very extensive range. I probably only have about half of it, maybe three-fifths three fifths of it here with me today because a lot of it, obviously, I don't need for the salon. Yeah. But there's a lot more products that are there in the salon that can be used. Um, okay. Sorry, you said yeah. you had some more questions before so I keep going. There are, there are a few more questions. So uh, Shweta is asking, can you use whitening shampoo and dark-colored coats? I think you answered that as well earlier. Yeah, you can, you can use them on blacks. You can use whitening, honestly, on any breed and any, so any color of coat. I just like, obviously, Plush, do Plush probably do have a black shampoo, a black opal shampoo that you can use on a black dog. And make black, it's designed to make the head dark bone. Obviously, blacks for blacks, and most people would say whitening shampoo is only for whites. But I like what the Hobo whitening does on a white, on a, obviously, a white coat, it makes them nice and bright and white. On a black coat, a silver coat, red coat, it doesn't matter. Even on my brown poodles, because I breathe brown miniature poodles, I like what it does to the hair follicle and the colour of the dog. It brings out the natural colour a lot more. It makes it a lot shinier and brighter. Okay. So I would use it on a black poodle. I always use it on my black standard when I showed her. So does it also work on tear stains? On tear stains? So around, it depends on the dog. Plus, we do have a product called Wonder Block. Mm -hmm. That's perfect for tear stainings around the eyes or dogs with obviously dirty elbows if they're laying right. on the yeah. ground and stuff for the staining you, and using that with, with, sorry, with Wonder Wash. So I don't have a Wonder Block here with me because I don't use it in my salon, obviously. Okay, but that's a, that's a show specific. Uh, that's a show specific one, but you can use it in the salon. I don't use it as much, but I prefer to use, I find that herbal whitening does just a bit of a job. The okay. Plush probably do have a literally a white stain remover Okay. which is called Wonder Block. Okay. It's literally just like a soap bar. Okay, cool. We have another question, which is, okay. uh, which shampoo do we use for a golden retriever? For a golden retriever? So I would generally use, at the beginning for my first bath, 
the neutral conditioning Find shampoo. Neutral. Yeah, natural conditioning shampoo and rinse them out. Mm -hmm. Then I would bath them in all purpose. And okay. rinse them out. It doesn't matter if it's a obviously American style gold or if it's extremely gold or it's more of a cream color. Mm -hmm. You can still use this all over on them. But then I will then rinse them out and then bath them in whitening shampoo. So again, it doesn't matter what shade of golden they are, whether the full extent of being a very American, very ready gold, golden, or very English style with a white cream. Mm -hmm. Same same process. I would still use this again. So I would bath them three times. So your go to shampoos seem to be your, uh, you know, your conditioning, uh, your whitening, and the what was the third one? The all purpose. Oh my the all purpose. purpose. So, so all of yeah. these three is like. So if, if a salon were to, uh, you know, invest in a few shampoos, these three would ones, be, I would be there. The there. Okay. All right. I would invest the most, and would be well. I so I would invest in a couple, but if I had to pick three or four for my mm -hmm. salon everyday use, which I do use. Mm -hmm. It would be the natural conditioning shampoo, the whitening, your all purpose, mm -hmm. and your bodybuilding. Okay. The bodybuilding can be used across so many different breeds and in so many different avenues and ways. <laughs> so okay. it, it depends what you're using it for, obviously, okay. but they're my main ones that I always have them in my salon in the five liter bottles. And I know Plush probably are starting to make them bigger bottles, 20 liter bottles, I believe. Oh, I think we might and, need those. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I always buy the five liter bottles myself. So when we're talking about also in the salon as well, like, there's still a lot of other ones I haven't gone through okay. in, that I would normally use in my salon, everyday life. So if I have a dog that once I've got them off my grooming, off the table, I'm ready to groom them. Sorry, I just need a cough. I'd bath them and uh, I'd spray them over with OMG, the conditioning spray. So I never brush dry hair ever. When I bath the dog and got them on the table and I'm ready now to scissor them, I'll spray them all over an OMG and brush the hair up and then comb, comb them out. Okay, so uh, we have another question. Uh, Sable is asking, can I use sea breeze oil in short coated breeds like Dobermans and Boxers? Yes, you can. You can. Yes, you so can would, well. it would be the same procedure, like you dilute it and uh, you, you know? Yeah, it does. Yeah, exact same. Same for a pug as well. Pug Dalmatian, you can use it the same way. Okay. Uh, what about cockers? <laughs> for, uh, sorry. For a, for, a, for maintenance, yes, you can, I would use it. So the sea breeze oil can be used on nearly every breed for a maintenance use, for a show dog or anything like that. But obviously for salon use, I don't use the sea breeze oil in the cock. I would not use it in the cock. I don't use conditioner. I use conditioner obviously then with uh, and spraying and using them and grooming them with OMG spray as well. Okay. Um, uh, so when I've got a dog on a table, that's what I said, I would use OMG first. If I'm trying to scissor a dog and I want a bit more density in the coat, so whether it's with a poodle, a bichon, a, an oodle with a thick coat, doesn't matter, or a Pomeranian. I would use volumizing spray. Okay. So <clears throat> once I bath a dog with a double, uh, with in bodybuilding shampoo and rinse them out, and I want to get a scissor finish on them and a nice, beautiful, dense, thick coat, as I said, a Pomeranian, a Poodle, a Bichon, I will spray them all over with this, brush mm -hmm. them up, and then comb them out. I use this as well, like a scissoring spray. Okay. So I brush, again, scissor them through, and then so I would, I would this would be an anti-static as well. No, so that's not an anti-static. So the OMG oh, is the OMG is an anti-static. Okay. Anti-static spray. So conditioning spray, obviously, an everyday grooming spray, and a good good with dematting as well. Okay. Um. Uh, so Varun is asking, can you please brief us on the ratio of dilution of creams like blow dry cream, volumizing cream? What would the ratio of the cream to water or, you know, what would that be? Yeah, so if I'm using blow dry cream in the salon, so I just grab some for you, give me two seconds. So if I'm using blow dry cream or volumizing cream, I don't, I don't have it in the salon at the moment, but say volumizing cream. You can see it's a paste. Mm -hmm. You can either use a teaspoon or myself, I'll use my fingers. But if I'm a bathing a, if I'm using this in the salon, 
Especially in a husky, and one husky will use volume out in cream. One husky, the other one, because it's got so much coat, we use blow dry cream because we don't want to give it more body. If they volumizing cream, if you want to give them more body, use the volumizing cream. If you, they have so much coat, you want to use something to flatten it and lay it down so it doesn't stick out so much. The husky I have here today, we want more body. So obviously we bath him in volumizing cream. So the way that plush probably use it, the dilution is depending how you're using it. It's one one part cream to three parts water. I believe that in, if you're mixing it up in a bottle, but if I'm filling it up in a tub, whether it's a bucket or a hydro bath, I generally put a couple around about a teaspoon or a bit of, a little bit more. If I'm using my fingers, maybe a good amount of my fingers. Right. And then obviously put it filling the bucket up, really making sure it dissolves in that bucket. I get it through, and then I'm pouring it over. Then the best way to use volumizing cream in for like that is I find with like a hydro surge or a hydro bath because mm -hmm. you can evenly distribute it out compared to so just say a bucket of water you can make sure you distribute it out perfectly right and evenly if you don't have that you can and I have used it before like that the volumizing spray which is obviously the same as the cream but ready to use use straight away okay. I would spray that through them all over and then dry them and you can get the same obviously the exact same result but I use the cream, I prefer the cream if I'm doing it in a double coat or in a breed like I want to give body to. Okay. Mm. Uh, and what would you use specifically for detangling? Detangling, that's not cool. In my style, when I'm recommending dematting a dog to a client or anybody, so plus probably after two sprays, before they had, they brought out their detangling spray, every, we would always use OMG. Okay. Obviously for a general day grooming, but you can, OMG can be used for dematting as well. But they did bring out a stronger product called TLC. Okay. Which is literally a conditioning spray. Like a, a very, it's a lot stronger than your OMG. So it's not something I would use if I wanted to just brush a dog and scissor it. It's a bit mm -hmm. too strong. But if I'm using it for maintenance, and this is how I recommend to my clients, I get them to demat a dog. I would spray this all through the, the matted hair. Mm -hmm. And then I would use a slicker brush and brush it out. So plus probably have two different styles of slicker brushes. They have your blue range which is a plastic range, it's, cheap, it's a bit cheaper than the salons use, which I sell as well. Or well, they have the ultimate range, few brown brushes. They're designed for poodle thick debt, like thick coats. It gets, okay. I find this, this range here obviously a bit more expensive, mm -hmm. but it gets right down to the hair follicle. And it's the one that I use in my salon, all my team uses it. Okay. Sell on the salon, it is exp more expensive, but you pay for what you get. This gives you the best results. Okay. So if you were to recommend it to say a client to maintain at home, right? If you know yeah. they have a dog that gets matted easily, would you would you recommend it's that they TLC take TLC spray. home with them? It's TLC. Yeah, it's an okay. everyday. It's a perfect one to recommend for clients. Doesn't it coat the, the you know? Doesn't it leave like a film or a coat over the hair? Not at all. No, no, not at all. So obviously you have on every bottle they have they have the twist tops so they can move. You can they have right. a straight stream or they have a wide mist. I obviously mm -hmm. use on wide mist, but you're just misting it over them. Okay. I can't tell if you can see it, but if I was to use it, it doesn't matter if it's OMG, I'm only just right. pissing it over there and then brushing them through and combing them through. So when I'm teaching my clients how to demat a dog and explaining them how to care for their salon, their dog, mm -hmm. that I don't want them to come and matted. I don't want to shave them off again. Right, exactly. But if they're matted, I get them to spray them in TLC, let it soak in a bit, and then I start breaking out and explain to them how to break the mats apart with a sticker brush and then a client in the salon. Okay. All right. Uh, there's a question. Can you explain how to use fairy frost? Um, what type of breed? What type of breed are we talking? Isha, do you have a breed in mind, or uh, I think it's more of a generalized, uh, you know, like uh, product information. Yeah. So, so for fairy frost, it depends what you're using it on. So again, I'll, I can relate it to a husky because we use it in huskies as well. On a husky, I would use it with the chalk cholesterol cream. Okay. The chalk estrol, obviously, you put it in your hands, you wipe it on the area, so it's white, wipe it on the areas, and then I use the fairy frost and I <clears throat> use it with an applicator brush. I put it on top of my whites that I'm trying, obviously trying to do it. You can't make white powder stick to a dog. It won't just stick to dog, the dog naturally. It needs something, a base. It needs something to hold on to. Okay. So that's why the plush probably have the chalk estrol. Or they have, obviously, that cover-up cream as well, which is a whitening cream the tear stains for a show dog, which we use in our own huskies. 
chocolate straw is just a very thin cream at uh, a famous the color. It just dissolves straight in and obviously you use a fairy frost with an applicator brush and dab it through. It just helps stick on, is it? Yeah, literally, it, help, it needs a base to stick on to that so it won't sit there. Yeah. Okay. It's the same for the terrier. Obviously, Posh probably have the terrier conditioner, uh, terrier, um, uh, what's it, terrier powder, sorry. It depends on the breed with that as well. Obviously, right. it's designed to make the stripping hair you mean? Yeah, terrier okay. powder. So designed to make the hair a lot harsher. Okay. Some breeds you can mix them together. So you can mix one part terrier powder with two parts terrier frost. Okay, and uh, so you know, talking about terriers or you know, stripping breeds, what would you use after you've stripped or carded a coat? What shampoo well, you know would you recommend after stripping or carding, right? What, breed, you, what breed of dog? Maybe <laughs> cocker spaniels, or because we have a lot of cocker spaniels in India, so uh, cocker spaniels, uh, schnauzers, so any dog that needs a little bit of plucking or stripping. So what, uh, what shampoo would be used after that? Well, it, it really depends, obviously, what the breed is. If you're doing a cocker, it wouldn't change too much once you've obviously okay. stripped it at the back. But if you're, trying to, if you're trying to keep the hair on a terrier harsher, obviously, you're not going to wash them the day before you want the hard, they want the harshness to stay in the coat. So if I was to wash the back of the terrier, <clears throat> I'd wash it the week before the show for about five days out. So I put that, that texture and the coarseness and harshness back into the coat. If I find other dogs, to put the harshness back in the coat, that's what the Terrier shampoo is designed for. The Texture Plus shampoo. Okay. To keep that harsh, harshness in the coat. And the last question right now is, can plush puppy shampoos be used on cats as well? Oh, we have another one after. So on cats, yes, as well. I use, I do cat grooming in my salon as well. And I know plush puppy is used with the show cats. I know that a lot though, because I get told it all the time when we get on and having meetings with Flush Puppy. It's the same way. The same the exact same way. So, so if you're obviously got a white a predominantly white cat, again, I'm a, I generally either use on a on a cat in a natural conditioning or I use deep deep cleansing on a cat first. Then with the whites, I would then do whitening shampoo too. Okay. So pretty and much I, the same thing. I, it's exactly the same thing. I do have clients that come in that show guinea pigs mm -hmm. and they use it the exact same way. So Plush Puppy isn't obviously just for dogs. You would think it would be obviously being named Plush Puppy, but it is extremely diverse across the range. I do know Plush Puppy has a lot of people that use it on horses as well. But they don't have any like uh, you know, <clears throat> cat specific or horse specific, it's no. nothing like that. So it's kind of well, all, it kind of covers. Yeah, it's quite diverse. It can be used okay. across, it, across it all. Because the okay. owners of Plush Puppy are also, John is, uh, the owner John is a very famous hairdresser. Okay. So that's why he, he and his like wife designed Plush Puppy. They have so, that's why Plush Puppy has such an extensive knowledge and their product knowledge on what it's meant to do, what the brands do and what each shampoo does or each product does. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, okay, so which shampoo is better for coarse coats like mm. foams, poodles, bichons? So, is there anything specific that is not too silky? That doesn't so too obviously, silky. yeah, so you're not softening down. <clears throat> obviously, to make the hair harsher, it depends. That's why you have your choice of your natural, you have sorry, your texture shampoo or your bodybuilding shampoo. Okay. Depends what I'm trying to do. Okay, so basically a softer coat, you would use the texture and uh, a, a, a slightly okay coat, you would use the bodybuilding. Yeah, exactly. It puts a lot more texture back into the coat if you're using on a softer coat. And if not, you're just using it. If you have a poodle with a very thick coat, mm -hmm. you don't need to put too much more texture or volume into the coat. So I just use bodybuilding shampoo, but if it's a lot softer, I'll use the texture shampoo, but then I'll also use a volume spray. Okay. As right. well on both. Okay, and which one would be the best degreaser for all breeds? Okay, uh, so we yeah, we were there. talking about degreasers. Yeah, so again, if I'm obviously, if you have a dog that I put an example, dirty coat or anything, I'll put sea breeze oil in for my maintenance, or it's just a normal dog that's coming in the sun, and again, I use the natural conditioning shampoo. I find it just gets all the dirt, strips all the dirt, the grime out of the coat, and that gives me a fresh, clean coat to start with. Okay. So, so they're really filthy. Mm -hmm. I'll bath them twice in this first. Okay. But especially if they're putting in sea breeze oil. So I bath all of my poodles in sea breeze oil to obviously look after the hair. Same with our huskies as well. And I find that's the best one just to get 
all the dirt, all the grime out, and then I have a start, a perfect starting base in my salon on the dog to then go from a head to depending on the breeders, Bichon, then Bichon or Poodle, etc. Then I'll or York here or Maltese, and I'll obviously go from there. So I'm you know, with the uh, with cats, right? Uh, they get like <clears> stud tail. <throat> so the 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 top of the tail is sort of really greasy sometimes. So what would you use yeah. for something like that? Yeah, I would use I would just Finish. use an, I would, okay. a natural finishing shampoo because obviously you don't want to dry the coat out either. Right. So that's why they, we use the natural conditioning shampoo because it does have a, a slight conditioning. So that would lift it. up all the oils. Yeah. Okay. But it doesn't strip them out. I find a lot of shampoos, obviously, there's some brands that do that like strip everything out. You don't want to strip all the natural oils and, and the conditioning out of the coat. Mm -hmm. But if they are an oil, cats are oily and they can be quite oily and residuey all over. So I will bath them in that first with some whitening. Okay. All right. Um. Okay, and also I just wanted to ask you, uh, the sea breeze oil, would you use that for banding your poodles and, uh, you know, for dogs that need their, their hair? Yeah, sort so of poodles, bed? Maltese, yeah. So I have a, in my salon, yeah. one of my workers has show Maltese as well. Mm -hmm. So she uses the sea breeze oil on all her Maltese and then bands and wraps them. Okay. I can, um, I'll just go grab one of my poodles for you now. I'll show you what I mean when I have them in oil. <clears throat> so I obviously breed poodles myself. But I wrap and band my poodles. It depends on the breed of the dog. If they rub their hair on the top of their head, same for Maltese or a Laza or anything like that. Obviously, some of them do break, so you don't want them to damage the hair too much. But they're, if they're constant rubbers, mm -hmm. I'll band them. Obviously, same my poodle. I band, I bath mine every six, every five to seven days. But if I'm wrapping, I wrap them completely head to toe. Okay. So then I find he's in oil right now. He's, he hasn't been bathed for about five days because I let them be dogs in between. But you can't tell it's too oily. But yeah, you can see a little bit of curl. Colin has got there's a little bit of oil there, but it's not too oil residue. <laughs> I think he wants to run around. <laughs> yeah, he does. He's only he's only 18 months old, so he's only very young. But I find I find for anybody that's wanting to use sea oil, I find it's the best to grow coat. Obviously, he met, he's only 18 months old. And he has a lot of hair on him. He has as much hair as an adult would. So if I had his mother and coat, she was four, and he has more hair than she does. And he's at, at the prime of her career at four and five, and he's only 18 months old. Oh, wow, that's a nice coat there. <laughs> but I find plush puppy, I never have an issue growing hair. Even in the salon, I never have an issue with the dog. If I've shaved it with a seven, I never have an issue growing the hair back because I find plush puppy, I don't know if there's something secret in it that makes the hair grow quicker. But it grows back very quick. Oh, okay. I find I find the hair using plush probably grows very quick, and because plush probably put a lot of research and time into their product, and it's designed to obviously give the best results possible and look after those, that hair of any breed. So again, whether it's a show dog or a salon dog, I use it very similar from my show dogs to my salon dogs. Okay, and uh, we have another question from Kritika: uh, Are the shampoos tearless, and can they be used on puppies as well? Yeah, so you can use them completely over all, all of them, doesn't matter. So my puppies straight away, I use them at, when I have baby puppies, I give them their first bath around three, four weeks old. Mm -hmm. I will bath them in plush puppy. So it's okay. completely so safe. Any it's of the shampoos are okay? Harsh. Yeah, yeah. There's, okay. No, there's no harsh chemicals. It's all natural in plush puppy. Everything's natural. You can see all, all of the plush puppy bottles. I know they've just started to on a lot of their bottles, put some of the product on there or what the ingredients. Some of the products, so some of their bottles I know do have the ingredients on them, but some don't. But Plush Puppy is completely natural, natural products, nothing, no, no, no harsh chemicals, no nothing in there. Okay, so four weeks uh, and up, you can use any of the shampoos. <laughs> you can use it at any age, honestly. I, I, when I start bathing mine at four weeks, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's completely safe to use. And I bath them in Plush Puppy from day one through to the, the last, to the, to the very end. Okay, all right. One specific product I feel, uh, James, uh, for the face, okay. let's face it. I think yeah. that, that would be ideal for uh, washing. Uh, for so, so let's say it's designed for breeds like, <clears throat> it doesn't matter what breed it is, but obviously for your Bulldogs, your Bulldogs and your Mastiffy breeds and stuff that have a lot of your skin folds, mm -hmm. it gets in there and obviously isn't harsher on the eyes because you don't want to get shampoo in their eyes. It doesn't matter if you get the, I don't sell that face in my salon, obviously. Because it is a show, I use it more as a show product instead of a salon product. But it's the foam. So you probably spray it through, put it in your hand and rub it straight through all their folds with their eyes. It doesn't matter if you get it in their eyes. 
because it's not going to hurt or stand or irritate their eyes and you can rinse it straight out anyway but let's face it, it's designed to get all the skin and the dirt and all the grime out of their face and all those skin folds so would it yeah. help with a shih tzu that has a really crinkly <laughs> nose you know like some shih tzus have like a really really uh, yeah. flat nose or even a pekingese like you know they have that you know that real yeah the, all the folds like, through the face yeah yeah and so it would work with folds. that as well would it remove yeah. the grime as well or no it does that's exactly right i use okay. if i was to use it i would use like a wonder block the soap bar and now let's face it in those areas okay. just to really clean up all the any dirt any grime any staining in there okay all right cool there was one more question uh about grooming a uh, american cocker spaniel mm -hmm. of a, yeah. for show a show dog so what products would you use for uh, american cocker spaniel there was a question in the chat box oh there was a, okay yeah so it obviously depends again what how of color it is but if i was to buy them in for, for a show we do a couple cockers in the salon um they have i think have made one or two americans in my salon not very many but if i was to buy them first i would buy them Fill them up in the tub. Again, I would start with my natural conditioning and just get all the dirt and grime out of the coat. I would rinse them off depending on the color of the pocka. It depends whether it's predominantly black or it's a party and it's got white in it as well. I would either use, I would just again then either use my um, the whitening or your all purpose. But generally on the black dog, I, again, I, same with the standard poodle or my black poodles, I still use whitening. Mm -hmm. Then I would rinse them out. And then I would bath them and condition up or condition it through their coat, all their furnishings, and then rinse it out. Because you obviously don't want to leave that hair cuticle dry and open because you're going to leave it open to prone to snapping and breaking. And you obviously don't want to damage hair. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing as when you're brushing a coat, you always use OMG. If you're picking up a brush, you're going to pick up OMG. That's what I tell everybody. Okay. Right. So one hand the brush and the other hand the OMG. Yeah. <laughs> so once they're dry, then I obviously pick up the OMG and then I use the slicker brush. But in my salon as well, I also, I don't use sand dryers. You don't I, use uh, sand dryers? No, I use human dryers. So I use a blaster, high velocity blaster, but then I use a human dryer to fluff dry them and get them dead straight. doesn't matter if it's a cocker, a poodle, any breed, or a caboodle, multi shih tzu cross, doesn't matter. Even a husky, once they're dry, predominantly dry, I use a, high I use a human dryer because I like how the heat that comes out of it and how straight I can get that coat. I want that coat to be as straight as possible. Again, poodle, bichon, doesn't matter. Shih tzu, I want the head dead straight. Okay. I know a lot of, I think a lot, majority of groomers just use stand dryers. I don't, I like, I, you'll find a lot of your Japanese countries, your Asian countries in America and um, Canada, they use human dryers. Soft, soft okay. dryer, hot dryer, yeah. So I think we use a mix of everything. We have stand dryers, uh, you know, the hand human dryers, as well as the... Use uh, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to convince people here to use them. They're a lot cheaper to buy, but I love yeah. them. I, when I'm teaching grooming, I teach them how to use a, a fluff dryer, human dryer, because I just okay. love the results I get from it. Okay, cool. So I think that's it for questions right now. I think you can continue. We've interrupted you enough. <clears throat> obviously, in my salon, again, once I bath the dog and I'm going through a dog, and they're ready back on my table and I'm finishing them off. There's a couple of different products I do use. So it depends on the breed and what breed of dog it is. If I have a dog <clears throat> like a Keysound or an Aussie Shepherd, a breed like that has a bit of dry coat still, even after putting sea breeze oil in or condition, it's still a bit dry. I will use the Plush Puppy Reviver Coat. It's a foam. So you can mix it up, shake it up. It's a foam. So I put it through their leg furnishings or their body coat and then I will brush them through. It does brush out really easy and dries in there pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And it literally just comes out like a foam. It's designed, you only need a little bit. It's just designed to help put a lot more moisture and condition back into the coat. Then I would just what and rub it through their body coat as well. And it's designed just to hydrate that hair follicle more. Make sure, obviously, if it is quite a dry and harsh area, you want to put that moisture back in because you're going to make sure you don't want that hair to snap or break off. So if I have a dog with it that's being clipped off in the salon, or oh, again has a very dry coat like a Aldi Shepherd, I'm trying to, I'm trying to obviously once you've clipped the double coat off, it's touching, it's 50-50 chance of it growing back normally or the hair being quite damaged and broken. So you're trying to repair that hair. So if I'm trying to repair that hair through the pants and the body coat, I will put the Reviver, coat, Reviver foam all through them or even a Maltese. 
and then just try and just add, add a lot more nourishment back to the coat. Okay. And I would obviously groom them through. If I'm doing a Maltese in the salon or a lot of our crossbreds that have long coats that look like Maltese or have a knees, I've already brushed them through with OMG, but I'm wanting the head to lay nice and flat. I've got a bit too much static. You can use the OMG, but Plush Probably have just come out with another product called Any Static Spray. Okay. So obviously, it, once I'm sprayed on, spraying on a dog's head, Poodles use as well. I'm wanting the head, obviously you want the head to lay nice and flat, mm -hmm. but you don't want a film or a residue through it. The, once I just miss the any static spray through their coat, it just finds that, um, so it spots out real fine mist like that, but I'm just brushing it through their coat and I find it leaves a nice hold on their coat as well so it doesn't obviously get rid of all the anti-static in the coat but i find it drops the head nice and flat so i would still use that on a could use that on american cocker as well as a finishing spray or a poodle i use it on my show poodles and as well when i want the ears hair to just lay nice and flat even on a windy day i just find it gives a bit more of a hold on the hair as well mm -hmm. so that the hair's not going everywhere okay. and obviously in, in my salon as well if we have any dogs that as a cologne or somebody <clears throat> might go to the bathroom in the salon. Obviously that does happen and the smell's there for a little while. We're trying to get rid of it. I use the Plush Puppy Odor Munch. They have two different ones, but I use it as a perfume in my salon. Okay. So every dog when they leave, I use the Odor Munch spray. I love the smell of it. They have two new, they have another new one they've just brought out. This is the original. They have another one as well that's a lot sweeter smelling. But I find this is more of a, maybe a boy smell. And I have one that's a lot more sweeter smelling, so not as strong. And I use that in my salon all the time as a, uh, before every dog leaves my salon. Okay. Uh, so we have another question here from Varun. What's the difference between um, a startup bath uh, with deep cleansing shampoo, natural conditioning shampoo? Where does the deep cleansing shampoo fit the best? Well, um, depending on the breed. So obviously on my longer coat of breeds or dogs that I find have a lot more soft, uh, like more skin irritations, I will use a deep cleansing first instead. So. As my start, as I said, as my first bath, I generally always use the green to strip all the dirt and oil. But obviously, if you have a dog that's got a drier coat or has some skin issues and you're wanting to soothe that skin and repair that hair and that skin, mm -hmm. I will use the deep cleansing on them like that instead of the or instead of the natural conditioning shampoo. I just find it's a lot softer, and you'll feel the difference on using the deep cleansing on a breed. Once you've used it, you'll feel how much it nourishes that coat a lot more and it conditions. Okay. Did that answer the question? Yes, or? yes, thank you, it did. Sorry. Okay. So. I'm trying to think, make sure that I've crossed a lot of the, the product is obviously there's so much it's of it. Strange, yeah. oh, once you've let, once obviously, and I always explain to people when I'm at Crofts overseas and explaining the product or any, any type of seminar, once you've gone on and had a look at the Plush Puppy website and you go through a couple breeds that you're common with, a lot of the, a lot of the products can be used once you're, once you're used to using a husky or a golden or an American or a poodle, it's nearly identical across most breeds and how you would use it or which, which shampoos or which products you would use. It's very, very identical. Obviously, I have a lot of experience with using it on show dogs. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I use that same knowledge I have to vary that over to my salon. Okay. It's, so, sorry. Right. There you go. No, so uh, there was another question. Uh, how to use protein coat balm on Shih Tzu's and Golden Retrievers? How to use it. So if I was to use, <clears throat> we use protein coat balm. So I would just spray it, obviously it's a cream. It just goes in your hand. I don't have any here, but I was to use it at the night. It, I find it just on a Shih Tzu, I would lay it through the top of their coat and then brush it in. On a Shih Tzu or Golden, same for their furnishings. I, we use protein coat balm on a husky when we're trying to flatten down the area. Mm -hmm. So on the top line and then lift in if we're trying to flatten it down or if we're trying to lift their underline up, and then we obviously rub it under the underline and rub it up so and it holds the area. Okay. On the so I would just squat it in your hand and rub it through the coat and obviously then brush it through. Okay. And it, it doesn't take it takes no time at all to dry. Okay. Cool. So we have no more questions right now. So, <laughs> so Sorry, sorry. I, I have two but I'm barking through in the salon. So when I'm using again when I'm using plush puppy in the salon, once I'm always trying to find I find with a lot of groomers or 
obviously show people as well. They're always trying to find the best products, but like they're find, trying to find the best products, but obviously a cheaper range. I always tell people, you're not gonna buy a cheap car if you obviously wanna make it work work for you and go for long, and you want something that's gonna be perfect. So I always get a lot of questions on how do my poodles always look so nice? And I explain <clears throat> that I can teach them how to use, I use Plush Puppy every single way, but if you don't use Plush Puppy the product properly, you're not gonna get the same results. So I Plush Puppy is a, a lot more of a premium product and I, I explain it to my clients as well, a lot more of a fancier product compared to say a lot of your other brands that are a lot cheaper and cost effective to buy. But I'd rather have a higher quality product in my salon or on my show dogs and pay f- to get those results. So <clears throat> Plush Puppy can seem like it's a lot more of an expensive product, but I always have the old school saying, if you pay for what you get. So right. if, you pay for, if you pay for a $10 shampoo, you're really gonna get a $10 result. You pay for a shampoo that's $50, is going to give you a better result. So I'd rather same for a haircut. I'd rather spend more money on a haircut for myself, and now I'm going to get a good quality service mm-hmm. than someone that's going to do it for five, maybe five or ten, ten dollars in Australia. It's not going to look the nicest. Right. Uh, so we have a comment from uh, Varun. He's saying, James, can you do a live session sometime soon on your dog grooming with plush puppy? Love to see the way you scissor those poodles of yours. So we have a request for you to do another session with us, which we will organize, Varun. <laughs> we can organize it. I'll figure something out on my schedule. I did do one last year in, in Japan, uh, a Zoom one uh, about scissoring. So I do know Plush Puppy. I am myself for my grooming school, going to start doing some online content in the new year, some videos on how to scissor and how to use Plush Puppy products. But I also know Plush Puppy Australia is doing and getting ready to do some online videos and how to use product demonstration as well. Mm-hmm. But it definitely, we can definitely organize that for sure. I always find when I do a seminar, or sorry, a webinar, probably it, it, they are quite long. So I always try and if I can break them up or et cetera, because it can be a three hour process. Yep. I'm not that, I'm a bit picky. I'm very uh, OCD and over the top, so I'm a perfectionist. So uh, some people may think it's fine just to do a little bit. I, I want to make sure as I'm teaching, I'm explaining it all and making sure you're getting the results. So I can definitely do that with you. And we could probably break it down into one or two parts, whether it yeah. was just a body trim and then a spray up or a maintenance bath. And that's what I did last time. Had a bath in Plush Puppy and prepared maintenance bath them or show bath them. Mm-hmm. Then obviously, then I obviously did another one where I scissored and sprayed the whole, the whole dog up. So I can definitely do that for you. Yeah, for sure. Yes, okay, we're going to be hounding you about that now. Yeah, You've committed. Find- You've committed. Find- now you're done. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to plan time on my schedule. I'm sure I'll find time. <laughs> I might probably use it. I probably might use one of my puppies instead. <laughs> uh, I have a young puppy. She's only four months old. So it's a bit, probably a bit quicker to use her than us. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure. Then, Be- then Beckham. He takes me probably two hours. Right. Yes, yeah, because is- of all the hair. Yeah. There's a lot of top knot. He has a lot of top knot. So, um, it takes a little bit of time to get them up. But yeah, I can definitely, we can definitely organize that in the future. I'd love to do that. I'm sure once the world's back to normal, we can obviously organize a, a live demonstration. Oh yes, that would be over, amazing. Over three or four days in India. I do have some uh, overseas ones I have to do soon, I believe in Thailand and New Zealand and some other okay. ones when I can start traveling with Plush Puppy. Mm-hmm. But there's definitely something we can definitely organize and make sure it's a couple of breeds across, a uh, couple of days of breeds. Yeah. Yeah, if you're coming, if you're coming towards Asia, then I think it makes sense for you to drop in the same. Yeah, I have, I have another yeah. seminar book to go to uh, Korea at some point in the future and Thailand as well. So might okay. as well make our way over there. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we're just like two hours away. So four hours away, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Australia is a big trip from, yeah. Yeah, so you might as well. Once you're out of the house, you might as well just, you know, visit yeah, everybody. Well just keep going. You just yeah. do the Santa Claus. <laughs> exactly. No, definitely, we could definitely organize something in the future once the world. Obviously, my country, Australia, is allowed, allows us to travel. Right. Cool. So, have we covered uh, pretty much, uh, you know, the products, all the products that we That's can use? The majority use of the, the product range that I would use in my salon, yes. I do, I, I do say, if anybody does want to know more, obviously, jump on the Plush Puppy website, Australia website. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure there's the India as well. I'm sure you have the same breed articles as well. Is that right? Yes. Right. Yes, you do. So, Plush Puppy, I do know, obviously, when. Plush Puppy Australia, once you have a new distributor on board, like in India or any other country, they have all the same the same tools and all everything that Plush Puppy have in the references. 
So jump onto the Plush Puppy website and you'll see all the grooming articles. Um, but if anybody ever wants to obviously ask a question, they can they can send me a message on my social media pages or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm more than happy to answer it. Cool. That's really sweet. So and obviously yeah, learning learning about the product, it's not once you understand the product, it's one it's one of the easiest products to use. I, I'm very passionate about Plush Puppy and how they use it and about the brand. So I, I love the results I get from it. So I always try and speak very highly about Plush Puppy. I would never change another product. It didn't matter if I didn't work for Plush Puppy again, I would still use the product. It's just one of my favorite products. Right. Cool. So um, uh, Jagdish and Isha, is there anything you would like to uh, you know, tell everybody here about the availability of products? Because we've had one or two questions and I know Isha, you've answered. But uh, you know, if you could just uh, tell us the availability of the products and how uh, groomers in India would get to it. So, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so thanks a lot, uh, James, for sharing your body of work and the knowledge that you have gained over the years. And I thank each participant over here who's been attending this for taking their time out. Yes, ninety uh, percent of the products are available, but some of the products like uh, chalcestrol we haven't brought in as the uh, show dog season is not yet planned in India. I don't think it is going to be uh, uh, conducted due to the COVID situation. But we will be adding some more. We have a website uh, that we have just uh, recently launched and uh, most of the products are there in that. 90% of the products are available. So whoever wants to reach out, uh, we have it on Athena Enterprise in Mumbai. So all of you, all the participants who attended the session will get an email. Uh, I'll share across the brochure and the website link. On that. Yeah, cool. That would be great. So, um, and James, it was uh, really lovely questions? sparing your time for us and uh, sharing your experience on the various products also. So yes, thank you so much, James. Yes, you have, have you. yeah, yeah. It's, and it's there's, there's, still, there's still a lot I could obviously talk about with Plush Puppy. Uh-huh. I find a lot of people when I'm explaining Plush Puppy in a live setting. Obviously, I find myself I find learning about a brand or a product a lot better when you're seeing it with your own eyes. Mm-hmm. So I I prefer seeing it with my own eyes and getting the feel for it. But um, again, Plush Puppy, I do know they are working in the moment with doing some demonstration videos and how to use product videos. At the moment, it may be a little bit of time before it's done, Mm -hmm. but it's definitely something they're working towards Plush Puppy Australia. So so we we look forward to that. And thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, James. The the session has been wonderful and I have learned so much and I'm sure everybody else has as well. And thank you for taking your time out. And, uh, you know, I know you're a busy man and it's hard to get hold of you, but... uh, Thank you for uh, being here for us and uh, helping us understand the brand. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, if we don't have any uh, other questions, maybe we can call it a day. And yes. uh, so thanks a lot, Andrea. Any- thanks to Andrea also for uh, helping us through this. <laughs> You're <Yes>. most welcome. <laughs> okay. All right. So thanks everybody, and thanks James. Uh, we're gonna end the session now. Okay. And uh, it has been wonderful, James. It's been amazing, actually, uh, you know, sitting here and listening to you talk so passionately about Plush Puppy and, uh, you know, understanding the brand. So if anybody wants uh, to check out the brand a little bit more, Jagdish and Isha will, uh, you know, help us out with a few links that I'll send to you guys. And uh, I know there are a lot of people here that are not PPGI members. So in case you guys are interested in joining the Professional Pet Groomers Association in India, please do go to our website, which is www.ppgai.com. And uh, you can sign up with us. We have a lot of, uh, you know, similar sessions organized, not just about brands, but other stuff as well, you know, about grooming uh, and uh, education and things like that. So, you know, we'd love for all of you to join us and support the community in India as well. And uh, yeah, so I think uh, that's, that's it from us. And again, thank you, James. Thank you, Jagdish, Isha. And thank you, everybody who joined us. And hopefully we shall see you again really, really soon. Yeah, you're all welcome. Yeah. Okay. And again, if anybody needs any help, they're more than welcome to message me myself. And I'm more than happy to help answer any questions. That's amazing. Yeah.
Have a great right, day. Thank you All so right. much. Yeah. Bye. Have a good Sunday, guys. Bye. Bye.